Hey there, I'm Brant at the Crocker Farm Auction and just wanted to show off three pretty cool face vessels that we'll be selling in Saturday's auction. So uh, the auction happens on October 26, 2019 and this is our third and final auction of the year um, offering over 500 lots of American stoneware and redware. Um, there's various ways you can bid and you can also attend the auction right here at our historic gallery in Northern Baltimore County, Maryland. But anyway, uh, Luke showed off uh, in another video that awesome large size Edgefield, South Carolina face jug. And um, that dates to a much earlier time period than the pieces I'm about to show you. And what's cool is that um, these pieces are still made basically in that same tradition that started way back in the 19th century and then actually continues today. But these are by some revered um, 20th century face jug makers in the American South. And the first one I'm going to highlight is this one, which is the like most recent of these vessels, um, made probably around 1975 with by someone we could call the master of the form, Lanier Matters. So working in Cleveland, Georgia, uh, Lanier Matters was famous during his lifetime for making these jugs. And um, as, you know, after his, since his death, uh, he's taken on even more of kind of a star status and his work is being uh, recognized more and more as great American folk art. And so we've seen higher and higher prices for his work as time has gone on. And this is probably in fact, it is the best example of matters work that we've ever handled. So instead of the more standard jug, uh, this is a devil jug. And Southern potteries uh, sometimes made devil jugs like this in the 20th century. Uh, we sold a great uh, early brown pottery one, um, I think last year, for upwards of $50,000. Uh, this is... Um, made several decades or a few decades after um, that brown pottery one was produced. But um, not only is this the um, an extremely unusual devil form for matters, but it has some really cool features here, almost cat-like features. Um, so really um, unusual jug for him. And it just makes a real statement um, you know, in person, um, hopefully, that's one of the reasons why I do these videos, actually, is to kind of get you a more in-person view of these than the photos do. But in person, it's a really striking example, and it has these really neat incised whiskers, um, a larger nose than usual, um, as pierced ears. Um, it has the incised details uh, to give it kind of a furrowed brow. Um, and then here's the... Uh, Let's see, here. yeah, there's the signature of the man himself, Lanier Matters on the base. Um, and you can always go on our website to get detailed shots of these pieces. Um, but there's that, and then we have, so that's a Georgia example. We have a North Carolina example here, which is a very small sized brown pottery art in North Carolina jug. Now it's not stamped by the brown potters, but this is definitely uh, a brown pottery example. Um, just is a dead ringer for their work. And I think maybe the reason why they didn't sign it is it's an unusual piece, um, kind of like a one-off thing where it's much smaller than what they usually made. And so um, this is actually the smallest brown pottery uh, example that we have ever handled and this was made like around 1930 or so um, and then this coming in probably like around 1950 is a jug that was very probably like we're pretty certain that this was made by a potter named Guy Daughtry in Bethune South Carolina now this is a this is really really close to his known works and it seems to be made by his hand pretty conclusively. There's things about this though that are a little different than what he usually made, which means that it's a very fine example of his work, or it's like an even rarer piece by a potter that 
that worked with him or in his tradition. But we're pretty confident that this was made by Daughtry himself. Um, one thing that's notable, just, just going through the details of this, one, it's larger than the jugs you usually see from Daughtry. Um, also, as I recall, all the Daughtry examples we've ever handled have been like more properly glazed um, over their entire surfaces, whereas this is unglazed. Uh, it has like a dot of glaze there. Um, but this mustache is just a great treatment on this piece. And um, it's notable that Otto Brown, another really well-known uh, face jug maker, out of Bethune, South Carolina, like Daughtry, also was known to do mustaches. So that sort of ties it into the Bethune thing as well. But this is like a particularly fine example of Daughtry's work. I think you'd be hard pressed to find one as good as this. Um, at any rate, uh, yeah, I just thought this was a great opportunity to show three great 20th century examples of this coveted form.